Welcome to the Phantasmal Fantasy Art Collector Show, um, where we get together a couple times each week and go scour the web looking for art. We uh, mainly focus on traditional art, and uh, you know, we can't, you know, obviously we love all art, but uh, the aim of the show is to find paintings that are available for sale uh, and you know buy them together, chat about them. Uh, you know, maybe just kind of uh, dig into the history a little bit. Uh, this is a, our focus is on fantasy, science fiction, and horror art. Um, I'm more of a fantasy based guy. Uh, my name's also Calvin Seymour, if you haven't watched the show before. Uh, also, if you haven't watched the show before, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it, it really helps the channel grow, and we are really just getting started, and I really want to turn this into a chat atmosphere. So if any time uh, you have questions or just want to uh, bring up a, a, a different artist or a subject for us to take a look at, uh, be sure to hit chat and I'll, be, I'll do my best to catch it and, uh, and we'll interact. So uh, our focus this week is... Uh, Going to be a couple of the usuals, but we're also going to be taking a close look at uh, a Kickstarter event uh, based on Patrick Jones' artwork by Mindwork Games. Now, Mindwork Games creates these mini you know, miniatures, um, but lately they've been doing uh, sculpts directly from paintings. They've been very interesting. Um, did a Michael Whalen Elwick piece, a couple of Brahms. Uh, Pat, uh, Patrick Jones, a um, few others, and they've been selling out. They've been great. Uh, I personally did not buy one yet, which I can't believe because he started with Brahm and, and Waylon, who are two of my absolute favorites. Um, but I kept thinking to myself, I'll never put these things together because you know there's some work. There's, they they don't come. They're not like buying a statue. Um, but you know, if you've got the uh, you know the time and the interest, uh, I think you're going to find these very interesting. Um, I mean, like I said, I, I've still may try to go back and pick up a couple that I've, I've passed and just hire someone to to do it because they're that good. Um, so let's get started, and what we'll do here is take a look uh, at my works. Uh, So basically, so far they have seven miniatures that are going to be available, um, and you can see they have an early bird offer that's going to be for the first 24 hours only. And you know, if you plan on getting them all, that's a great way to do it. You always save that way. Um, they have four revealed and three in silhouette. Uh, as you can see, we've got Night of the Zombie, um, which I find to be. Uh, a very interesting piece. Um, I think I, I first encountered Patrick's work uh, because he did this this one painting of Conan. Now you know I am a Conan fan. Um, it's one of my cornerstones of my art collecting. Um, and <clears throat> so he did this piece. It was called uh, Conan the Unconquered. No, excuse me. Conan the Conquered. Conan the Un Unconquered is a book, so it's a play on it's a play on words, uh, and definitely sounds like a Conan title. So I love it for that too. Uh, but I actually have that where I can show you. Um, let's get that. So this piece, I just had to kind of give you a a close up detail because. You know, they have a lot of risque parts here, and YouTube doesn't like that. So I just wanted to you know, give you an idea of what that looks like. I think uh, I think one of the unique things about Patrick's art is this, you know, there's a couple of things, but the, the uh, you know, he's great with anatomy, for one thing. He's got tons of art books and videos and things that you can use to, to learn how... Uh, he does these things himself, um, but his color palette, he keeps it 
on on virtually every painting I've ever seen. It's like he's he's picked it out, and this is how he expresses himself, and it shows up in different ways in 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 each of his paintings. Um, but with this Conan painting, I really liked uh, you know the the composition. It was really cool to see you know Conan's uh, been captured. It's usually some damsel in distress, so nice to see the the tables are turned here. Uh, but I just really liked it. And it it's, it's what introduced me to his art. Uh, I started looking at uh, a lot of his other pieces. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's good to have a gateway. I mean, I think, I think brands and intellectual property, uh, they kind of do that for a lot of people. You know, like for instance, he has he has seven different ones in here, but one is a Conan. So a Conan fan is very likely to find this, as well as someone that likes mermaid paintings or satars or, or you know, uh, Medusas and and uh, you know, uh, Greek mythos. Very likely to stumble upon this just from those aspects, and then that kind of gives you the opportunity to learn the artist, learn what they can do, and figure out if you know if you personally have a connection with it. Um, and I do with Patrick Jones, it's just something else. I, I really like to see what he's gonna come up with next. So uh, I'm gonna show you a few more details of Mindwork Games. Uh, so we're gonna go and take it, check them out. So the first thing that I will bring over is so we have a few of these uh, Kickstarter advertisements. Um, so it looks like there'll be prints and is that possibly a book? Yeah, it's a Patrick Jones book. But you can see some really cool details. This is a little video. It's not playing for me. Oh, there we go. This is Night of the Zombie. Well, it says Night of the Dead Zombie here, but it says Night of the Zombie on the material I was looking at, so not sure. It's one of the ones that have been revealed. Atlanta and the Giant Boar. Atlanta. Cool. Forge of the Gods. That's a great name for anything. Come on, we have to have the spinny god. Dual wielding hammers. Again, you can see the anatomy here. Just brought to life in this sculpt by Mind Work Games. That's pretty amazing. This video is only going to let me resume it, but it won't even let me do that. We'll have to use our imagination on the Medusa. So as you can see, uh, it's a really worthy project, great artist. So why don't we uh, take a look and see if we can find some Patrick Jones art for sale. Find some paintings. Um, so I have a few I can show. So there's over at uh, IX Online. You, if you join uh, the current exhibition going there, you can find the Patrick Jones room, and there's several pieces available there. Um, this is a, a small, uh, you know, sketch. Uh, I think it goes for around five or six hundred. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it's called Melancholy. Pretty. 
pretty typical example of Patrick's work. Very beautiful. Here's a detail um, of Solomon's loss. It's one of the ones I would have had to doctor a little bit to show you the whole thing, but you probably get the picture. Look at the beautiful blues in that and the greens and just the colors are just, it's like it's his colors, it's his colors, but somehow he just makes it work for everything. It's really great. Now I'm actually, this isn't actually at IX. I found this like online and it said it was at IX gallery, but it may be sold. So don't, don't go rushing over there. Um, just yet, but, but it, you can contact him and see if it's available. It, it, it was at one time. Of course, I guess they all are at one time until they're not. So, um, <clears throat> This is a very beautiful piece. Um, I forget the name of this one, and but I know it's in his booth. Uh, let me take a look. So this is Odyssey. It's on sale. It's actually on sale for six thousand dollars. I I think I saw this listed for as much as ten thousand before. So it's a great deal. Um, I could definitely see that hanging and if I could convince my wife that's uh, not always a winning thing for me and let's see I wanted to load one other just another little little drawing I like to kind of find things for everyone and the drawings are usually more affordable you want great art. Yeah, so this is the drawing I'm talking about. It's called The Prayer. Um, yeah, so Melancholy and The Prayer are both listed for $500. And there's many more. Um, he has 29 pieces of art in his booth at IX online. So I definitely recommend you checking out. Uh, but the Mindworks Kickstarter is on the starts on the 25th, so just a couple days away. Um, get that early bird special if you're so inclined. I, you know, and and there'll probably be a lot of other things that you can grab as add-ons, and there'll be stretch goals. Um, I'm thinking I'm definitely going to to get in on this one. I'm going to have to figure out, uh, you know, what I'm going to do. I may just have to man up and do some some painting. I used to paint miniatures a lot. You know, I'm a old school D and D player. Um, so I'm actually pretty good at painting miniatures. It's painting canvas that I'm not good at, but it's just been a while since I've done any of that, to be honest. Um, kind of have one of these situations where my whole gaming crew kind of moved off for a bunch of tech heads and everyone offers better jobs everywhere. Um, and so, you know, we don't get a lot of the face-to-face -face miniature games anymore. We'll still get online every now and then and have a Zoom or Skype game session, but it's it's not the same as the old days and you know, throwing the dice on the table and the you know, using your your miniatures running right through the dungeons and the maps. So that does it for uh the Patrick Jones session. I think next I'm gonna go check out Heritage Auctions, weekly auctions. Uh so, I don't know that there's a ton in this one. We will kind of, I mean, there is a lot of artwork, but there's not a, just a whole lot of science fiction and fantasy stuff that I saw browsing through it. A um, couple of good Star Wars illustrations. Uh, elk. Crossing no. Keith Bird song. Always good. And a bit of a splash page there. 
looks like the shadow and that the hornet and we got a nice Tarzanish. It's not Tarzan, is it? There's a big dead ape. Richard Clifton Day Hunter's cover painting, original art. Currently at $31. It's a deal. Nice Wolverine illustration. A Jeff Dickel or Dickow. Like this really old style drawing. That's great. It's actually just 2004, though. Just a, someone doing it in that style. Um, there are a few drawings that I saw in here. One, at least, was definitely a Dungeons and Dragons drawing. This looks like a X-Men thing, I see the Angel. 2006 Marvel vs. System Mutant Massacre card illustration. So card art from a game. I like that. So I did see this. I like this piece a lot. This is uh, John Harris. It's puzzle illustration art. What got, what got me is this kind of old school joust. Um, Reminds me of the Ivanhoe days, and when I was a kid, my mother would drop me off uh, and let me uh, go to the library, and my imagination was just really opened up by all these early books of knights and things. I think that's what that was kind of my gateway into D and D and and the like because I just loved everything about that. I think before that moment, before I started doing that, I was. I was more of an army man guy. Had a love for uh, G.I. Joe and Star Wars and things like that. That opened up a whole nother side. I like these, low price. Um, I might I might bid on that. That's really cool. We'll see. Robert Heindel, Avon Cosmetics catalog cover. Someone taking a little bit of a sleep. Ooh, a Hildebrandt. I'd love that style. Greg Hildebrandt, Sheena, preliminary cover art. A lot of Jungle Girls tonight. So, you know, Heritage Auctions has this weekly auction. Um, it ends on Monday nights. So that's why one of the reasons why I'm doing this show on Tuesdays is that we get the brand new stuff to look at. And you know, if you're sitting around and you'd rather uh, kind of go through it with me, you can do that. Or, uh, you know, if you want more details, you can always just go to ha.com. That, that, that style looks really familiar. I don't know the artist, though. Aaron LaPresti, Red Sonia. Metal Men, DC, Detective Comics, I haven't missed those drawings, I don't think I have. Mike Perkins, Kiss of Death, Keith Pollard, my skeleton. Uh, the Phantom, Doc Savage, and the Shadow. Alex Saviuk.
nice ballet painting. Yeah, so these are the ones that I saw. Carl Waller. Um, so, let's see. It's pretty good. What is going on here? Someone is... Strangling an Eden? Is that what that is? We've got two heads. Now perhaps I should read it first. Fantasy illustration. A warrior plants his axe in the back of a creature's head. So I don't know that this was published. It's not saying. And so otherwise this could just be Waller's cred in doing D and D art. So let's see what else we can find here. Ruins of Undermountain illustration. You see that's already at about seven fifty. And that's a, a you know very famous module. I don't necessarily remember this picture or anything. But I love to see this kind of thing become available. Eight by nine and a half. Hollow World Sons of Aska illustration. Another Sons of Azka. I like this piece. This is very like you could have seen this in any old D and D module at any time. Surprises go. It's less than the others too. That's quite an interesting piece. It's the one I featured on my little group shot too. Queen's Harvest. So everyone's walked into this room a million times and when they're when they're gaming. Bunch of orcs and ogres and playing dice in a corner. Not usually a lot of talking goes on after that. That does it for Heritage Weekly Auctions for Phantasmal Show. Plenty of other things in there, but we just, like I said, we focus on the fantasy art. And, and I just did all that, and I do believe that I didn't have... I have that on. Let's see. Where is OBS? I did not have the browser on. I apologize. See, now, once I get more people viewing, someone will let me know when these things happen. I, I see YouTubers do it all the time, and it is, it is very hard to keep it all, you know, in line. I can tell you that. Um, give me just a second. And I will get rid of a couple things. I'm going to speed back through those drawings. So here's the, you know, pretty much everything I highlighted here are the Star Wars drawings. Keith Bird song I mentioned. Is 
is a tar Tarzan-like ape killing. No, I don't know that that's anything. Hunter's cover painting. There's the mutant card illustration I was talking about. This is the John Harris piece I was looking at. It's great. You can see, uh, like I said, this is reminds me of the days back when I was dropped off by my mother um, at the library and I'd find the books like Ivanhoe and books on nights. It was really a great thing. Greg Hildebrandt, Sheena. I think I have really messed things up. We'll see. Every week it's been uh, an adventure so far. give close-ups on those uh, d and drawings by uh, Carl Waller real quick and then I will move on let's see you guys can see what I was talking about it's the one I liked and featured And a trusted group of bad guys playing dice in the corner. All right. So uh, finally for tonight, I think that uh, I'm going to head on over to Facebook and we'll take a look at um, the, the Changing Artist Collective's auction. It's called uh, Love and lots of nice pieces we have uh under the mistletoe actually give me just a second i want to be sure i don't have anything i need to avoid for i don't think i will but a few of them do put certain kinds of pieces in there all right i think we're good um, so the first piece here is by uh, Iris Compete. I used to call that Compiette. Always kind of thought it was like a French name or whatever. But uh, anyway, some, sometimes she does great work. She's uh, I've, I've featured her in my group many times. Um, she she kind of has this kind of taking the place of like Brian Froud, you know, doing the the pixie gnome nature art really great vibe here's your chance to get one and low bid um ralph horsley a great artist himself uh 
actually open the bid. It's currently at three hundred dollars. Love is a loving home. Nice, warm, cuddly piece uh, by Arya Pratula. Ink and watercolor. Starting bids 175. Look at the open. Mr. and Miss Owl by Astrid Shekels. It's a, it's a watercolor on cold pressed paper. Small work, four and a half by four and three quarter inches. Starting bids 110. Click it to open. Get some sheep. Janet Hendersdorf. Hendersdorf. Not sure. Looking to open at 300. Hands and a nice thorn and another Jana Hender Heidersdorf. Someone correct me if I don't have that right. Pencil, acrylics, and watercolor. Starry bid 150. Looking to open. Squire Fox's Sonnet, Astrid Shekels. 8 by 8 before starting 175. And it is currently at 175 and will sell. Reminds me of the all the little animal books. What are, the, what are those called? I can't remember. They had them on the buses and things when we were young anyway very very cool style very neat little bears like them prancing that's what they do in the woods every time when you're not looking and, and that other thing uh, let's see start bid 110 and it is opened uh, here here's some straight up phantasmal stuff a couple of dragons having a candlelight dinner how do you think they lit those candles sorry bid 110 oh someone buy, bought it now at 150 that's what we get for waiting so long to come check out the auction oh getting a valentine's heart That one's opened at 115. Papa Gino and Papa Gina find each other from Mozart's Magical Foot. Elizabeth Alba, starting bid 1300. It's 12 by 16, matted and framed. Oh, here's a nice shot of it framed. Really pretty piece. Definitely all about love. Uh, Maria Partula. You have a couple little mice, mices, helping them get berries. Looks like you can get a commission, have your pet done in watercolor. The Bell Flower, Guelph Book Illustration. See, this is fantasy. You know, little, you know, little, little rabbits in a, like a elf-like house. It's exactly where rabbits live, and that's how they do it. But when you bid four hundred, we got a five hundred, six hundred. We got a six hundred dollar bid. Still going. That's really going. Nine by twelve, decent size. You got a second one, the Mossy Kettle Pub. Am I not seeing the artist on these? What? Did the other one have the artist? I don't, I don't think the name is Guelph, but maybe it is. That's 
that's cute. Rabbit Dad. Well, this one's getting bid out over double starting bid. That's basically a buy it now. <laughs> Still going. Title, he mounted his horse, jumped up to the third story, and kissed the king's daughter. Illustrated, illustration for the golden bristled pig, golden feathered duck, and the gold maned mare from myths and legends of Russia. Artist in Patap. Eddie him upon. I'm gonna go with that. Ete. Ink and gouache on arches, hot pressed watercolor paper. Starting bid 260. And is that 300? And that does it for the Changing Artist Collective. Um, so I will quickly go through a few of the usual places on. Facebook about um, about one minute before I went live I saw a message come across that a very 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 uh, key magic card was up for auction in the um, in the magic art market so we'll check in on that first let's see what we have in Phantasmal Tim Frederick. Tim's a great member of Phantasmal. He's, he's been there for a couple of years and I uh, always love seeing what he has. Looks like he has picked up a few pieces. Um, by Jim Pavlik. Legends of the Five Rings stuff. Someone is not having a good day. Dragons. Oh, lightning. Anyone catch that uh, Mortal Kombat trailer? I'm just thinking about Raid in there. Actually, it looks like it might be fun. Oh, look at that. I bet that's already gone. That's cool. I've, I've really been in the mood for some Hearthstone Blizzard art. I, I used to have Wayne Reynolds' Brawl piece, um, or Gurabashi Arena, if you're, it's, it was on the card and used in Hearthstone as the, as the Brawl card. And I had to sell that during a not great period of my life. And uh, I really regret that. I need to replace it. I've seen some good pieces here. This is great. I love this. Dark, and got a little magic action. Very wild-like. Imagine it sold. These go so quick, and that's two hours ago. Yeah. Doesn't say that it sold. We should check. We have a uh, Colos Yearling by Patrick Ho. Sorry, I had to take a second there and look at his uh, his toy shelf. I have a few back here, if you'll notice. Actually, it's still it's still pretty new for me, though. I get into that at some other time. And I think I talked about that last time, so we will go check out a couple of the magic groups. This has been going for a little bit. Uh, Eight hundred dollars. Uh, that ends tonight. At basically eleven minutes ago. Yes. <laughs> so all these are probably closing out that we've seen. Now here's the one I was talking about. Millstone, one of the granddaddy key decks from Magic the Gathering. Nothing like playing against a millstone deck. As soon as you realize it was a millstone deck, it was just throw everything at them and just hope you could take them out. S such frustrating thing to play against. Um, 
Now here's the original artwork, and his asking price is $75,000. Um, he, now, Nick Koss here is a member of the 5% Club, and if you don't know what that is, I, I just recently joined that as my, myself, is that basically we're pledging to give 5% back to the artist on any work that sells for 5000 or more. It's a great way because a lot of these a lot of these artists sold their paintings for, you know, 200 300 bucks 20 years ago, and now they're watching them, they're sick, watching them sell for something that would pay their house off. Um and so the 5% Club is just a way to give back to the artists. I love it. It's exactly the sort of thing I'm uh, all about. Um, so anyway, Nick has this. He's going to give 5% back uh, to Kaja Foglio. And uh, it's, it's not big, 5.5 by 7, but that's pretty common for older Magic cards. Um, and this is definitely something... I mean, it's great art and everything, but this is something where the nostalgia is going to make it worth way more than the value of the art. Um, it's it's just a, it's a piece of history. It really is. Now, I saw another one. Uh-oh. Unicorn Cell. Valorous Steve at Anato. About 20. Wow, that's gorgeous. Man, that's gorgeous. 60 by 20 oil frame. According to Nato, the art direction requested a slight turn of the head from a full profile, which is seen in the final oils. This piece of artwork is unmistakable detail and movement that requires a master, such as Donato Giancola, to produce. The color is really popular. It looks absolutely incredible in person. I'm happy to give another collector a chance to put it on their wall. Uh, a lot of details. Sixty-five hundred dollars or best offer. Man, that's seriously tempting. Hmm. Man, beautiful. I love to look at framed paintings. I th you know, I don't know what it is, but I think it's the texture of paintings and that whole. The whole moment where you get that perfect frame and you put it together and you put that on your wall, that's a great feeling. That's why I collect, that's why I collect traditional art. Because, I mean, as far as the image goes, I mean, you just easily go get a print. looks great. You know, I, I don't know why. It's just, to me, I love that, that, that look, that feel. That, I mean, the smell. I, I don't know. It's just like, it's something. It's really, really powerful. Oh, look at this here. Okay, I saw this too. Now, I, if you watch one of my, my first video that I did, I actually won the auction for Egon, God of Death. So, um, kind of neat that the Throne of Death is now up, and it's 500 for the used and 275 on the unused by Jason Engel. That's tempting. They look good together. And it's currently at 500 only used. And 275 on the unused. And there we go. I subconsciously picked up a nail there and was messing with it. That could have been dangerous. I don't know why I have a nail in my tray over here. I guess from framing. And I think that's getting close to it for the night. Let's we'll check out a couple other groups really quickly. Howard Lyon is a treasure. That's a true statement. He's kind of on my short dream list to do a commission with. I think we are.
here pretty much. I'm there. Check Blizzard just to be sure. You never know. Something new could be there. Of course, they have that piece. Oh, yeah. So I saw this. I don't know what the availability still is, but Wayne sent out an email and he had this available in the email a couple days ago. It's probably gone, but worth checking with him if you're interested. I could probably dig that email up really quickly. Let me see if the price is in there. Vanessa Van Cleef. So he said, I've already received offers to purchase. I'll most likely launch an auction for the original artwork should I receive multiple offers of the same price. So status seems to still be up in question. I don't see a sold on his official thread. So get your bids in. It's, get your wallet out. You know, you, you uh, need to pull the green stuff out. Do what you got to do. That's a great piece. I'm especially partial to Wayne Reynolds stuff because of his time on Pathfinder games. Okay, well guys, that's it for tonight. Uh, I really, really, really want to get the chat sessions going. I, I want to get some people in here when the show's going. That'll be great. It won't be so formulaic of me just going through the art. I think it's really important that we get an atmosphere where everybody wants to talk about it and it maybe leads us some places um uh, so if you would please remember to subscribe if you haven't uh like it if you if you're so inclined um a comment would be great i know that really helps with the, the algorithm and possibly even share it uh get it to uh, other fantasy art collectors and let's get this community going thanks again and uh have a great night and hopefully uh, I'll see you next week. Or Friday, I should say. <laughs>